On one occasion, Jesus, in summing up some of his teachings, made the following remark. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise person whose house, house is built on rock. As disciples of Jesus, we would, I think, all want to be this kind of person. But the problem is that sometimes the words of Jesus can be hard to hear and even harder to put into practice. It's not always the case, of course. Sometimes the words of Jesus are very encouraging and consoling. Think, for example, of what Jesus said to the woman who was caught in adultery. She was being denounced and ridiculed by everybody. And she was probably expecting to hear the same words from Jesus. But instead, she heard the words which were exactly what she needed to hear if she was to have any hope of beginning to put her life back in order. What were those words? I do not condemn you. Or think of the man stricken by the terrible disease of leprosy who calls out to Jesus, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. And again, the reply of Jesus was exactly what the man needed to hear. Of course I want to, said Jesus. Be healed. Jesus' words, of course, are not always so consoling. When he is confronted by the hard-heartedness of some of the religious leaders of his day, he calls them, and I'm quoting him, hypocrites who are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside are full of bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. Imagine what it must have been like for those men to hear those words from Jesus. At other times again, Jesus' words seem not so much confronting as confusing and often extremely challenging. And today's Gospel is a good example of this. Is Jesus really inviting us and expecting us to make him the absolute centre of our lives as his words today seem to suggest? Are we really supposed to prefer him to our own family? Does he really expect us to follow in his footsteps no matter how great the cost? Is it really the case that even the simplest gestures of kindness, like giving a cup of cold water to a thirsty person, have real value, not simply because they are expressions of human goodness, but more fundamentally, because they are expressions of our commitment to Jesus himself. Is this what Jesus is really asking of us? The answer to all these questions in Matthew's Gospel is a very clear yes. This is exactly what Jesus is asking of us. And of course it is in this that the real challenge lies. Seems to me that what St. Matthew's Gospel is really saying here is that Christianity, our Catholic faith, is not first and foremost about rules to be followed, even though those rules provide very important signposts for our journey through life. Nor is our faith primarily about doctrines to be believed, important though those teachings are for helping us to understand who God really is and what God is asking of us. No, before being about rules or doctrines, as Pope Benedict said it so often, Jesus, who is the Word of God, made flesh for us so that in coming to know and love and serve Jesus, 
coming to be his disciples, in other words, we are entering into a profound intimacy with God. Sometimes the rules are difficult to follow because they ask us to live according to values which are more and more regarded by our wider society as old-fashioned and sometimes as even damaging to us. Sometimes the teachings seem irrelevant, of no real value to our daily living, and we are tempted to ignore them or even deny them. But if we come to understand that the teachings, if we engage with them, can point to the beauty and mystery of the God who comes among us in the person of Jesus, and if the guidelines and rules can be reconsidered as sure, God-given ways of keeping us on the path that leads to the fullness of life, rather than simply being man-made regulations which limit our freedom to do as we please, then these teachings and these rules and regulations might begin to make more sense to us than they do at present. If our fidelity to the Church's teachings and principles is understood to offer us a way to a deeper, truer, more intimate and loving relationship with the Lord Jesus, then they will become for us an energising source of life, rather than a heavy weight which seems to drag us down. There is no doubt, at least in my mind, that the kind of relationship into which Jesus is calling us is challenging and it's demanding. And this, of course, is true of any relationship with another person. Relationships are always challenging and demanding. In the case of Jesus, we are being invited to develop an attachment of love and fidelity to a man whose way of life led him to the cross. Are we ready to follow this kind of man? In following him, we will be challenged to make the same journey, which is to say, to make of our lives a loving gift to others, no matter the cost, just as he did. We will find ourselves struggling sometimes under the weight of the cross, again, just as he did. We may well find ourselves abandoned by some of those we thought were closest to us, just as he was. But to the extent that we already live as disciples of Jesus, we will know from experience that living as Jesus lived brings us a peace and a joy which far outweighs the effort required to follow him. As Jesus himself said in this morning's Gospel, those who lose their lives those who, in other words, hand their lives over to others as a gift of love and do so for the sake of Jesus, will find their lives again in a new and richer and more fulfilling way. This is the promise of Jesus in today's Gospel. And it's the promise of Jesus, really, which is found on every page of the Gospel. If you want to live life to the full, then allow God to form in you the same mind and heart that was in Christ Jesus, who made of his life a gift for the sake of others, and in doing so, shows us why God gave any of us the gift of life in the first place. Today we pray that the Spirit of God might mould and shape us in this way, and that we can find it within ourselves to be open to this transforming power of God's Spirit.